the issues underlying humanitarian crises are complex and no single organization has the capacity to address them in any kind of substantive or systemic way. And so we have to find ways to build broader collaborations, especially those partnerships with local organizations and working with the private sector and with the governments. That is very tricky and challenging and it takes a long-term vision, uh, but that's the only way we can really get to the roots of these deeply embedded complex issues. The overall context at that time saw an increasing number of organizations entering the land rights field, uh, greater awareness about the importance of land rights, better research, and those trends have continued on the positive side. On the challenging side, we are still facing a conflict over land, increasing scarcity of land, difficult governments, and the need for more partners and more donors uh, in this critical sectors. Most donors have other priorities. They're not really thinking about the foundational nature of land rights. They're not aware that in most countries across the global south, people suffer from insecure land rights and that undermines all sorts of development priorities. When women have secured property rights, including rights in the land that they cultivate, they gain improved status in the family, which leads to greater influence over household decisions. When it comes to deciding which crops to grow, which agricultural practices to adopt, which protection measures to apply, women are more likely to decide in favor of soil health, climate conservation, and food security. When local communities are involved in the planning process, they take the ownership and the designed program ultimately falls in alignment with their interests and that also ensures the sustainability of any intervention. I would say it's not enough anymore just to transfer resources. We have to be mindful of power and power imbalances and how our work is ultimately helping to shift power, which means building the capacity, building partnerships, giving more space for local actors. And it also means having strong local staff on the ground who are able to manage those very challenging dynamics. I think for a strong and resilient humanitarian sector, it's important that the humanitarian response is rooted in the local needs and context, and that the sector must establish and maintain a trustful relationship with the authorities as well as with the communities. Increasingly, international NGOs face skepticism from both governments and local civil society. And those groups that are going to survive are the ones that are able to partner effectively, generously with governments and with civil society groups. Resilience requires nimbleness. We are facing increasingly rapid and increasingly important changes in the environments where we work. And we have to be able to recognize those changes and be proactive about adapting to them. We've got to be able to build the resilience of local actors and local communities in advance of the crises. We can't just be reactive. We've got to be proactive in that way. And we've got to address this history of dependency and north-south power dynamics head on. We still need to be there. There's still a role for the northern INGOs, but we have to approach that role with more humility, with more of an appreciation for the long-term needs of strong local actors. That has to be foremost in mind when we do our work. <laughs>